When you purchase the 998 Rebuild Kit, you will receive an instruction sheet and the following parts inside the kit. One number two O-ring, two number six O-rings, two number 33 O-rings, two number seven retainers, a left and right hand housing, the trigger igniter assembly, a safety, all the necessary assembly screws, a button, and a combustor assembly, which includes the flame holder, spark plug, and flame arrestor screen. You can also refer to your 998 user's manual or our website for more information on the part numbers and a schematic of the 998 heat tool. You will require the following tools to complete the repair of your model 998. A Phillips screwdriver, a small jeweler's Phillips screwdriver, a small pick, a flat blade screwdriver, and a small hammer. The first step is to place the heat tool on a flat hard surface and to press the yellow button on top of the 998. Once the button is depressed, twist the combustor either left or right and detach the entire assembly from the body of the heat tool. Next, remove all assembly screws from the left hand housing, then turn the heat tool over and remove the rest of the assembly screws. Now remove the left hand housing. This is a good time to make notes or take a photo of the assembly so you remember the orientation of the parts in your heat tool. The first part we will replace is the trigger igniter assembly. First, remove the pump body from the housing. Now gently place the blade under the metal strap that is holding the black ignition wire in place. There are small tabs on each side of the body that hold the strap in place. Once removed, set aside the button spring underneath the button, which will be reused when putting the heat tool back together. Now remove both number 33 O-rings from the neck of the body. Using your jeweler's Phillips screwdriver, remove the small screw that is located in the center of the contact spring. This small Phillips screw penetrates the ignition wire and holds the wire in place. After removing the screw, you will now be able to gently pull the ignition wire from the side of the heat tool. Set the screw and the contact spring aside so they can be used again when putting the heat tool back together. You are now ready to install your new trigger igniter assembly. Take the new ignition wire and gently insert the wire into the same hole on the side of the body until it stops. Next, take your Phillips screw, contact spring, and reinstall them inside the front of the body. Please note there's no reason to remove the wing-shaped black socket inside the body of the heat tool. If it is removed, slide the socket back into its original position using a press fit. When reinstalling the screw, do not over tighten because this can strip the wire on the inside of the heat tool. Once the screw has been tightened, gently pull on the ignition wire to make sure it is secure. Replace your two number 33 O-rings over the neck of the body and take your button and button spring and put them back in place. Make sure the button is centered on the body and snap the black wire strap over the button and ignition wire to hold everything in place. It is also a good practice to apply O-ring lubricant or Vaseline every four to six weeks to the O-rings so they maintain their moisture and sealing capability. It's also a good idea to blow compressed air through the body of the heat tool, especially if the heat tool has been sitting on a shelf for several weeks. Debris can clog the body and create a weak or uneven flame during operation. The next step is to remove the fuel line and inlet assembly for cleaning. First remove the safety, then pull the fuel line from the top of the valve assembly and set the return spring aside for reinstalling. Now remove the other end of the fuel line from the bottom of the inlet assembly. Always blow compressed air through the fuel line if disassembled to ensure clean fuel is passing through the line. Now take a flat head screwdriver and remove the filter holder from the inlet. Remove the filter holder spring and o-ring and clean any debris from the screen and clean out the inside of the filter holder with compressed air or a clean rag. Special care should be taken when handling the filter holder so that the orifice does not sustain any damage. 
If compressed air is blown from the back of the filter holder through the legs of the orifice, there should be no need to remove the orifice from the filter holder. If the legs of the orifice appear bent or broken off, then this will cause an uneven flame when the heat tool is in operation and should be replaced before using the heat tool. Take a small pick and remove the plastic retainer and underlying O-rings from both the filter holder and the valve assembly. The O-rings and retainers can wear over time and not provide an adequate seal for containing the propane, so both of these should be replaced during any repair procedure. After you install the new O-rings, gently tap in the new retainers into the filter holder and valve assembly. Next, slide the return spring over the fuel line and insert back into the top of the valve assembly. Now it is time to reassemble your 998. Lay the left hand housing on a flat surface and install the fuel line and valve assembly first. Now turn the heat tool over and install the small screw into the valve assembly to secure it and then turn the heat tool back over. Now you can install the filter holder and safety. Make sure the orifice is centered so the legs are pointing down the center of the housing. Next install your pump body and trigger igniter assembly. There are bosses in the left hand housing that help guide the safety and the trigger igniter securely into place. Now place the right hand housing back on top and snap into place. Please note that you will see large gaps between the housings when you start to reinstall them. This is normal. Install all of the assembly screws back into the housing and turn the heat tool over. Now install the final assembly screws into the valve assembly. The gaps will go away and the housings will fit together as the assembly screws are reinstalled. Finally, reinstall the combustor assembly so that the yellow button snaps cleanly into place on the neck of the combustor. Your heat tool is now ready to hook up to a shrink-fast supplied hose and regulator that attaches to your propane tank. Before firing the heat tool, turn on the propane tank and ensure the pressure of the tank reads the factory preset pressure of 22 PSI. All shrink-fast heat tools should never be operated below 20 PSI. Operating the heat tools at less than 20 PSI can cause the flame to burn inside the combustor assembly and cause damage to the flame holder. After the pressure is confirmed at 22 PSI, use a spray bottle of soapy water to check all the fittings to make sure there are no propane leaks. If there is a leak, you will see small bubbles appear at the connection. If there is a leak, immediately turn off the tank and tighten the fittings to ensure a proper seal. Turn the tank back on and retest. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact our customer service department at the number shown on the screen. Shrinkfast heat tools are industrial strength devices that operate off of propane and create an open flame to shrink film for storage and transportation purposes. Like any power tool, great care should be taken before, during, and after operation.